that is uh, this is an award that has been uh, generously provided by the Professor Ram Kumar uh, Memorial Foundation, uh, and uh, it is to uh, award annually uh, a paper that was published previously in one of our educational data mining forums at least uh, eight years prior and has stood the test of time. In other words, it has uh, um, generated a lot of uh, follow-up and it's been used, it's, it's had real influence. And you can see uh, the past winners here. Um, uh, tomorrow we'll be announcing, and not tomorrow, later today, uh, we'll be announcing the 2021 winner of the Test of Time Award. Um, and then we'll hear uh, the winner speak next year at the conference. Uh, last year, we announced uh, Cristobal Romero and his team um, as the winner for this paper, Data Mining to Classify Students. Um, and you can find that paper here uh, on the website. And um, uh, Chris Ball has had many great achievements and has been a wonderful contributor to educational data mining since its very beginning, uh, has uh, written many influential papers in, in addition to this one, um, has uh, helped uh, 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 with conference organization, for example, last year as, as a conference chair. Um, great contributor. Um, Christopher, why don't you share your screen at this point? Um, and uh, um, you can all go see his long list of contributions. I want to give him the floor and more time. So I'm not going to go all through, all through all of those wonderful contributions, but uh, we look forward very much to, to hear about uh, this great work and your reflections about it since then. So welcome uh, and congratulations once again. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, good evening to all the work. Uh, this is an honor for me to, to stay here and to, to probably the, the, this talk uh, because this was uh, very good uh, memories, very good remember in Montreal when the, I uh, present this paper in the first conference in Montreal. The title of the, the paper is Data Mining Algorithm to Classify a Student, but the real, real uh, title has to be a Predicting a Student Performance or Predicting Final Mark of University Student starting from uh, the interaction of the shake information with learning management system in Moodle. And this is an UDAY version of the original paper that I have improved from 2008 from the, to today, you know, from 2021. And the paper uh, was, uh, I, I was the first author, uh, my, my boss, Sebastian Ventura, and also the other two partner. Uh, I am member of the, not only member of the University of Cordoba, but I, I have also a research group, is the Knowledge Discovery Lab in the University of Cordoba, but, but I am also member of a new Institute Andalus of Data Science and Computational Intelligence that is in Granada. Granada, Jaén in Cordoba, is joining a new Institute Research. Um, it is a coincidence that in EDN 2008, I, I remember that I see Spain win Italy in the quarter of final in the Euro Cup. And today, at this moment, Spain is playing versus Switzerland in the Euro Cup in quarter of final. So uh, it's a coincidence. Uh, and I hope that uh, I want to promise some good luck to Spain. When I finish my talk, I hope that Spain win. To see. <laughs> I hope that. Okay, let us start with the with the presentation. Okay, the, the presentation have two different parts. The first part, Crystal, is the uh, 
Yeah. Do you want to be in presenter mode? We're seeing your. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mode. Better. I I try, but I don't know what. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Better. And the first part of the paper, uh, there is the this part in the we will see the original part of the paper, the presentation, the original presentation, the introduction, implementation, conclusion, future work in two thousand eight, and I have the the addition, the middle of the presentation is the new research line improvement challenger that I personality working during all this year and also I detect that the, the, the paper is very old. So uh, someone that is uh, seeing this presentation and want to work in this line, uh, don't have to use the original paper. So I put in, 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 in this moment, not today. So there is the new addition. Okay, let us start with the first part, the original presentation. Okay, in this part, we are into the introduction, the ability to predict or in this paper, classify, this is important. I'm going to classify. I'm going to use classification task, no regression, okay? Prediction of a student performance is very, very important in educational environment, of course, it's, it's very, very important. And there are different uh, objectives for predicting or classifying students. They are, they are final uh, objective, for example, predict the, final score or the final mark in the course, to predict dropout, school failure, etc. To predict also rate student or student with problem, low motivation of student, misconception, gaming, etc. etc. In course. A very promising uh, area to attain this objective is the use of data mining. In fact, this is one of the most useful data mining tasks in education. Classification and um, different algorithms have been applied. Neural network, discriminant function, genetic algorithm, and also regression. In this original paper, uh, we compare different data mining techniques, a lot, a lot of different data mining te techniques for classifying student data. Based both on a student or using the student information from the interaction with Moodle, the web-based courses, Moodle. And the objective is to predict the final mark that the student obtained in the final exam in a university course. So this is very ambitious because only using the USAID information in Moodle, we want to predict the final mark obtaining in a in-person exam. Okay, we have used real data from seven Moodle courses from the Cordova University, uh, all about computer science. The seven courses are very similar. We have also applied two different techniques. This registration, or, or we use the original data, numerical data, okay? We also discretized all the data. So we, all, we use another data set, discretized data set, and also, at uh, the third data set, we rebalance the, the data. It's a pre-processing technique we explain later. So we have three different data sets. Finally, we have uh, developed also a Moodle-specific data mining tool in order to make it a little easier for our structure uh, to uh, use the proposed methodology. A background about the classification task. The, the task of classification in data mining consists of predicting a value, a categorical attribute. That is, it's not a numerical, it's categorical, a label. For example, pass, file, high, low. So a categorical attribute in or is it is named the class attribute. This is the value to predict, based on different values of other attributes that are named the predicting attributes. In our case, all these predicting attributes are obtaining starting from the Moodle logs, from logs file from the server. We obtain all these predicting attributes. We explain later. There are different classification methods, different uh, techniques or algorithms. We group in different, uh, in, in this, uh, I have grouped in this way, but there are other way to grow, grow this method or, or technique. 
For example, the statistical classification algorithm, such as linear discriminant analysis, large mean square quadratic, kernel, linear network, etc. Decision tree algorithms, such as C 4.5 and CAR. Rule induction algorithms, such as CN2, IPOC, XSE, SAE, Corcoran, GGP. Fuzzy rule learning algorithms that are uh, very similar than rule induction algorithm, but also have a fuzzy label. So it's a mix or rule. Uh, so that Logiboot, Max Logiboot, Adaboot, GP, GAP, SAP, and she. And also neural network algorithms that are the now are the old version of the current deep learning algorithm. So that multilayer per sectron. RBFN, incremental, decremental, RBFN, GNN, NNAP, etc. So we have a lot of, uh, we are going to apply all these algorithms to the seven uh, courses, three data set from each of the seven courses. Uh, we have used it in this year, in, when, when I start to work in this paper in 2007, one year ago, we selected this algorithm due to we working in the University of Cordoba, in, in my group, Merced group, we developed the KILL. KILL is the knowledge extraction by, based on evolutionary learning. This is similar than the Wicca, Spanish Wicca, is the Spanish Wicca version. We developed a, a Wicca. And the name was Kill. Kill was more oriented in soft computed algorithm. It's similar to Wicca. Wicca normally is a well known data mining software, Wicca. But Kill is more oriented to fuzzy, fuzzy soft computing algorithm, evolutionary computing. It has the classical algorithm, but also probably more advanced soft computing algorithm. This open source is in Java, also in Java. You can download, you can use. This is the web page is, is uh, also is, uh, is working. You can download it and have a lot of uh, model and also data set. It has also provided also a lot of data set. Uh, it has also more, more uh, classification algorithm that you can develop and add to kill. So you can develop new digestion network or direction, and you can add to kill. Can, is, can be expanded, it's scalable. Kill project is developed in, in collaboration, was developed, it's now closed, was developed in six, nine years working, nine years working, five Spanish research group, five. Cordoba, Jaén, Granada, Barcelona, y Oviedo, five group. Okay. Uh, we also developed a specific data mining tool that use Moodle data and kill in order that an instructor don't have to use kill. Okay, it's for a user-friendly interface. This is a specific tool is more oriented to an online instructor that don't know nothing about Wicca, about um, kill, no, no. So it's more easy. We integrated this tool in a servlet, integrated into the Moodle and applet, a server and applet, in order to the, the interface, the, the client interface and applet, the server interface and servlet, and communicate, communicate with uh, Kill and also with Moodle. We integrate this tool in Moodle, in uh, all the version of Moodle, version one, in order to facilitate the execution of the data mining. In this way, an instructor can both create, maintain the courses in Moodle and also do the data mining process for classify their student. We implemented this tool also in Java, okay, using the, the killing interface, no? But we also integrate classification algorithm. We don't integrate with regression and clustering and other techniques, only classification. This is the interface, the final interface on uh, Moodle courses. You can see uh, here the, 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 in the background, you can see the Moodle course. And in front is the applet in which you can see the, the interface, the meaning tool, and also the output. When you execute an algorithm, you can see the output is similar than the output provided by Wicca. 
We are going now to, to show all the, all the screen uh, in a step. The first step in the data mining tool is very, very important. In some cases, it's the more important in data mining, the pre-processing, the gathering data, and pre-processing to prepare to do the data mining task. We need one year to obtain the data, but also some months to pre-process the data. And finally, you apply the algorithm very fast. It's the faster to apply algorithms. So the pre-processing data is the most important task in data mining. Uh, in order to use the, the, the instructor have to create the training and test data. The professor has to provide these two files. We are going to explain how. These two files are obtaining from Moodle log file from the server, from the Moodle database. They can select, the instructor can select directly from the data mining tool what uh, table from the database want to use. They select directly from the log, the chat, the forum, quiz, and create a summarization table. This summarization table is later used for predicting. We uh, the tutor add the final marks of each student and then use party uh, divide or split the file in training and test and uh, execute the algorithm. So the, the data file using this tool can be automatically pre-processed and created. We are going to choose the pre-processing in, in which the, the professor can create a file, okay? They can create a file from Moodle table or create only one uh, file from one table, only for example, forum, only from forum, or do you want a summarization table from all the Moodle resources? In our case, we are going to create a summarization file, not only for one resource. You can select one or all the, source, uh, the courses. In this case, uh, I select my course, Fundamentals Informatics, my course, I select my own course. You select the, the table, you can select one table, all the table, okay? And you select the, the summarization table, what attribute do you want to create? For example, if you, you select the log table, I, I have to select log table in order to select this because this information is a summarization table obtaining from log table. For example, in this case, I select the number of assignment, number of matches, number of posts, number of red, number of quiz, number of quiz uh, pass, number of quiz five, and with the time in some of these tasks and the, the name of the, of the file. Uh, in this table, yes, the, I don't anonymize the, the, it's important this, this, this is are my real student. You can, I'll say, uh, oh, Cristobal, you, this is a, a, a private information. Yes, it's a private information, but in Spain, when you publish a final mark on, on one subject, one course, it's public. We publish this information, but it, because the student competed by the uh, honor mark, the, the, the highest from uh, the excellent. The excellent is a competition. We can provide the, the name and the score and publish it in internet on a, on a table. We can publish. So uh, the normal is to anonymize. It's true. The normal is to anonymize, anonymize the, the, the name, but the, the instructor have to know what the student is in order to put the final mark in the exam, okay? That is when the, we add the class attribute, but in numerical way. Later, we have to discretize this mark in order to put a label, pass five, for example. Okay, next, uh, the, the meaning tool have a executing tool. It's when the, the meaning tool uh, uh, call, communicate with kill in order to execute the uh, algorithms. In this interface, the, the structure use the training and test file previously generated. Starting from only one file, you can create the two training and test file splitting in different percentage. And you have a, a lot of, you can see there are a lot, a lot of algorithms. It's incredible. 
I think that Kiel probably about 100 of classification algorithm is enormous. I select the most popular, 25, I, I think. Okay, and you can also uh, modify or not the default parameter of the algorithm. For example, if you, you can select all the algorithm, modify the parameter or use the default parameter. I recommend use the default parameter, but you can tune the, the parameters if you want. And also you only have to run the algorithm to run the, the select the algorithm. And they probably different files. They probably add, uh, result the training test and also a uh, uh, obtaining model. In the obtaining model, this is the, the this one, you can see the, the decision tree in this case, the decision tree, and also at, at the end of the file, you can see the metrics, the metrics about the number of uh, student correctly classifier, incorrectly classifier, okay? In using this information, it's very easy to uh, obtain the other evaluation metric, uh, accuracy, specificity, uh, the area under the rock curve, or, or the metric, evaluation metric that you want. This is the basic information about the number of Eastern corrective classifier by this model. Okay, so we have the tool, we have the data. We are going to do an experiment. The experiment is, we are going to apply the most popular algorithms in kill to the seven uh, uh, courses, the data, and we are going to see what is the accuracy or the best accuracy that we can obtain, okay? The objective, predict the final student performance based on only this, uh, I, I believe that was uh, seven or eight attributes, no? They will say information data, the summarization file have uh, I believe uh, let, uh, now we will see. The final is classified in four good. Okay, we are going to be to see four. Is uh, not only past five. No, we are going to to see four good. Now I explain the four good. Um, to do it, we use the. In total, we have uh, seven codes with four hundred thirty-eight students. Okay, this is the total number of as a student or data that we have in our data set. Uh, firstly, we create the summarization table. We integrate the most important information for our objective, the model activity and the final mark obtained in the course with numerical data. Numerical data about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten algorithm, that, that ten attribute, the cause, this uh, the diffraction number of the code is not probably information is between course one from seven number of assignment the number of assignment that is each student do or have done in the course number of quiz number of quizzes taken by each student how many quizzes have passed this student how many of quizzes filed the student how number the total number or message sent to the forum course each code has a forum so for question and answer to the, to the other student in the structure, the number of messages that each student read on the forum, and the times, the total time used on assignment, the total time used in quizzes, and the total time used in forum. And also the final, I don't see here, but uh, I'm going to move here. And the, and the mark is the final mark uh, that the student obtained in the course, okay? I'm going to put this because I don't see, okay, yeah. Uh, secondly, we have to discretize it in the criteria of the data. Uh, it's, obligatory, it's mandatory to discretize the class because if we are going to do classification, the mark cannot be numerical, have to be a label. So we have to do a manual, uh, a manual uh, discretization of the uh, final mark. Okay, uh, the discretization task is uh, normally split the numerical data into categorical classes or group. 
These groups normally are more easy to, to interpret, to understand, to ice to, to, to a teacher. Okay. E about the class, about the mark, we apply the manual method. The manual method is in which the instructor in OSK or the data miner specify the cutoff points. That is, for example, in our case, the mark attribute, we, we use the Spanish scale, the Spanish marks. That is a value in the final exam, a student obtain a value from zero to 10, okay? This is the Spanish universal evaluation scale. Uh, in this scale, we have also a categorical scale normalized. That, so we use this normalized scale, manual method. In this case, uh, we use in Spain four intervals. So in our case, we use four labels that are file, the student file, if the value, numerical value in the final exam is lower or less than five, the student pass is the value, the, the final mark is between five and seven. Good is when a student obtains a score between seven and nine. And excellent is the best is when the student obtains a mark or graded uh, greater than nine. Between nine and 10 is excellent. So we have four levels. This is not a normal classification task. This is a multi-task, no multi-task, multi-class. There are four class, not the traditional two class. Later we we'll speak about this because it can be a problem. Yes, can be a problem. We can see, we will see the result later about this. Uh, we also apply an automatic equal with method to the other nine uh, attributes. The USA information from Moodle, the interaction, the summarization table is numerical. And we use the equal width method to discretize in three levels, low, medium, and high value. Uh, the equal width is very easy. For example, imagine the number of posts evaluate, the lower is zero and then higher nine, okay? It's automatically. Equal width is put in three parts, divide in three equal width. So from zero to three, low. From three to six, medium. If from six to nine, high. So this is very fast and automatic method to discretize each attribute, each value. So equal width add up to the minimum and my value and divide in three with this attribute, okay? Continue. Then with the, this two data set, numerical and discrete side, we exported the both version of the summarization table to a text file with the kill format. The kill format is very, very similar to the Wicca format. It's very similar. If you open the Wicca, RRFF, Wicca, and add, DIT, we uh, kill is the uh, are, cuisine, are very, very similar. Net, we divide or make partition using the traditional tenfold of the word file in pairs or training tests. Okay. And we also consider the problem of the learning from using imbalanced data. What is the imbalanced data problem? In the imbalanced data problem, in, is in which some classes differ significantly in number from others. That is, for example, there is a lot of students that pass, there are a lot of students a little later than five, there are some students that are good, but there are very, very few students excellent. So the problem is that uh, normally an algorithm in data mining is very intelligent and they say, oh, there are only a few excellent students. And they say, I am very lazy and intelligent. I classify only past five. And the other two, I don't classify it. I don't try to classify it. So this is not real. So the good is to try to, to also classify these uh, imbalance uh, classes. In order to resolve the problem, this is a real problem, we use it random oversampling. This is a method, it's an automatic method 
that consist of copying randomly chosen instance of minority classes in the data set. That is, for example, to create or to simulate excellent students. For example, is there are a few excellent students. They create, simulate excellent students in order to have a group, uh, a, a bigger group, in order to can compare with a good student, pass and file student. In this way, all the classes are more balanced. They are more similar number of uh, or, or instance before to apply the algorithm. Finally, uh, we use uh, the three uh, data set from with uh, tenfold the original numerical data, the categorical data, and the numerical relevancy data. So we have three, three data sets. We carry out uh, one execution because we have different types of algorithm. We have different. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have to. Uh, we have calculated, uh, we have uh, determinant and non determinate algorithms. Determinate algorithms are the classical algorithm. And non determinant non determinants are, for example, the evolutionary algorithm that you have to execute several times. And each time you execute it, you obtain different uh, results. So you have to execute several times and average. So all the uh, determinants are executed and the non-determinants are executed five times. We have calculated the global percentage of the accuracy rate, correctly classified, and the geometric mean. This is the true evaluation metric that we use, the accuracy rate and the geometric mean. We use the same default parameters from the algorithms of the same time. For example, all the uh, FUSI algorithm or the evolutionary algorithm we have, you use, 1,000 iteration in evolutionary, and in the FUSI algorithm, we use four levels. We also use uh, 25 uh, previous defined uh, classification algorithm implemented in KIL, okay? And this is the result. This is a very big table in which we can see the result that we obtain it. So they are the, the method by group, the name of the algorithm, the result in accuracy, this is the accuracy, and the other value in, is the geometric mean in the three data set, numerical, categorical, and relevance. Okay, we can see the next. Ferrosol, the accuracy is not very high. No, nope, it's not very high. In fact, it's very bad, yes, because the highest, highest value is 60, 7% of accuracy is not very high. Wow. OK, it's not, not very high. In the numerical, it's the higher, but we can obtain very, very good result. One explanation about this is because uh, uh, thinking about is because two reasons. One of the one. Uh, we are using only Moodle data, okay? We are only using Moodle to predict the final map. And the other is because we try to predict four level, four. This is a multi-class problem, but using the traditional uh, classification, binary classification algorithm. Some of the algorithms are prepared to multi-class, but this is not a multi-class problem, and we try. So this can be some reason because we don't obtain very good result. But uh, another uh, general uh, comment, for example, there are some algorithms that improve and when we use categorical data. So some algorithms improve and some other not. And also uh, rebalance data no algorithm improve with rebalanced data. And also the geometric mean don't improve. The, uh, in general, the best algorithm in the result was this. The decision tree car obtained in general the best result, this algorithm. 
Assumerization of the result is also in this table. About the global percentage of correctly classified, uh, more than a half of the algorithm obtain higher values as in the original numerical data. In classification, the original data numerical are the best, okay? And a half the algorithm with numerical and the other half with categorical. But normally numerical data are, are we obtain better results. The best algorithm are this algorithm with numerical data are CAR, GAP, GGP, and NNAP. And the best algorithm with similar uh, percentage about the accuracy, 65 percentage or accuracy, is categorical data are the two decision tree algorithm, CAR and C4.5. And the bell algorithm with, uh, uh, with unbalanced data or balanced data, the result are very bad, are not very good. So, and this is the, the, the algorithm. Okay, this is when we speak about the percentage of correct classification. But the geometric mean offers us better view of the classification performance. But the problem in the geometric mean is that we have, uh, I say the same again, we have four classes, not two. So they are two imbalanced places, but when we try to rebalance it all, the results are not uh, very good, no? Most of the algorithm obtain better result with rebalanced data, but the accuracy is, no, is lower. We improve in the geometric mean, but obtain lower accuracy. But finally, this is very important the comprehensibility of the obtaining model. Because uh, in our educational problem, it's very, very important for the classification model can be user friendly from the structure. It's true to have to interpret in order to make better prediction and to know what, uh, why this classification. Some the obtaining model are more interpretable than others. For example, decision three are considered very user friendly easily understood model. They are a, a, a wide model. They can be transformed directly into if-then rules that are very user-friendly. Rule induction algorithm also are very considered produce compressive model. And also FUSI rule algorithms. They are also if-then rule that also with linguistic term. But the statistic method and the neural network can be more, can obtain better accuracy, but usually they are considered black box mechanisms. In fact, they don't provide information about, about the classification. Conclusion and um, future work about the original paper. We have showed some algorithm improved uh, with the proposed uh, the equation, but other not. So they are not a general. Uh, uh, Recommendation. We have also indicated that good classifier model have to be both accuracy and comprehensible. This is very good to be accuracy and comprehensible. Decision tree fit these two objectives. And in the future experiment, we want to measure the comprehensibility of, of the classification model to use data with more information about the student and with high quality in order to quantify quality the data affect the performance. It's true, if you obtain more data, better data, you obtain better, better result. And finally, we want to test the use of the tool by teacher in real pedagogical situation in order to provide the acceptability of the use of the tool. The tool also have to, uh, the professor had to provide the, the parameters of the algorithm. So come to be, we think that the tool can to be improved. Okay, this is the part one. This was the original paper. And now uh, we are going to add some addition, new research line, improvement, challenge. What I have done, or I have thinking about this paper when I read now, uh, uh, today. Okay, new research line improvement. The first one is, to use other data mining tools, software, and frameworks. The second one, other classification method, to use other I, new classification method, ensemble, the learning, we are going to see now. 
to apply meta learning for helping in parameter tuning and algorithm selection. To use other evaluation metrics, there are a lot, not only accuracy and geometric mean. And also, it's important, a statistical test. Next, to apply the Barker Learning Analytic Price. Uh, the early warning prediction is currently a very hot topic, early warning, to predict as early as possible. And finally, to use more, more and different data, multi-source, multimodal, smart learning, blended learning, flipper classroom, etc. etc. Okay, let's see one slide for each one. The first one. Currently, today, there are other mean, two and so are very popular. For example, today, Wika is one of the more popular software and very user friendly. Also, user want to use Rapid Miner. It's also very popular and it's also developed in Java. But currently, there is a, a, a lot of uh, developer and data miner want to use um, a language, for example, R. R is a programming language with uh, its initial credit to perform statistics, but have a bigger library used for data mining. And also, of course, Python. Python, uh, I use now Python. It's a popular programming language and provide a collection, a big operation module for doing data mining. You have two uh, paper, two reference. I added uh, at the end of the slide, you can see two reference in order that you can see more tools and also uh, more tools and, and APIs and language for programming. Okay, there are also, a specific framework, a specific software for applying data mining in Moodle, for doing data mining in Moodle. They are, yes, they are. For example, years ago, I developed a, another data mining tool, the MDM tool is a Moodle block that, uh, that we developed, but only work with Moodle 3.7 that can apply basic data mining algorithm, but it's integrated in PHP language into Moodle. But I recommend, personally, I recommend, and I, I provide the reference of the paper, the, the tool is available, we have the, the source code, it's available the tool, the paper, but personally, I recommend the, the second one. Why? Because the second one is directly integrated in Moodle, uh, and is uh, supported by Moodle. Moodle has an analytic uh, um, block, an analytic module. Moodle from the version 3.8 plus have an analytic API. Yes, it's allowed to manager to define prediction models that combine indicators and target and provide a deep learning model training with previous courses that you can apply to your own data in Moodle directly. So it's not, uh, I don't know if uh, you know, but this is very, very interesting. Moodle have it, it probably, and you can use it, wow. And you have a paper that you can read about uh, about how to do it. In fact, in this paper, uh, it's the, the um, Dujiamas is one, uh, is the, 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 the father of, of Moodle. So the paper, if, uh, David o Olive is one of the author, um, and the Yama is there. Okay. Another thing, other to apply other algorithms and methods occur. Currently, they are better algorithms. The first one that I think in that is better, assemblers. Assemblers. Uh, if you want to do classification, apply assemblers. An assembly is a combination of multiple classifiers, commonly references as assembly classifying assembly. And it has been demonstrated the ability to improve classification, yes, in many domains. And there are a lot of versions, botting, boosting, bagging, stacking, random forest, random subject method, random boosting machine, run, rotation forest, extremely random mixer tree, assembly method, and also with deep neural network ensemble. They have some problems, okay? They have, for example, in ensemble, you have to select weight and the algorithm, what algorithm I have to use, which weight I put to each of these algorithms to the ensemble, and also the interpretation, the interpretability of the obtaining model when you mix and 
the assembly, the, the final result cannot be interpretable by the user. I provide two reference of uh, the assembly and the problems. Okay, and also, of course, of course, other algorithm and method to use currently, deep learning. Deep learning now is a hot topic, it's very popular to feel in the, the last year. Is the, the traditional multi-layer um, uh, multi neural network, but now uh, with a lot of, a lot of hidden layers. It's a big neural network architecture that higher level of abstraction in data. And there are a lot of, of samples of a new architecture that are used uh, in EDM with good results. For example, multi-layer perception, long chair, long short-term memory, convolutional neural network and some variant, fit forward neural network, recurrent neural network, autoencoder, bidirectional long short-term memory, memory network, and new all the day uh, appear new new version. So we can to test with uh, educational data. They also have some problem, of course. For example, the training. Normally, deep learning needs a lot of time of training, a lot of time. And also the configuration. There are a lot of parameters about all the, 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 the layers, the value. Also, the problem of overfighting. The overfighting when you trying and trying a lot of time with the same data, the model is uh, uh, the accuracy is very good with your data, but when you apply with a different data, with the test different, it's uh, not a thing good result. This is the, the proper fitting problem. And also the explainability. The explainability in the learning is a problem because the obtaining model is not a um, blackboard, no, it's not. And this is a paper about uh, a review of the learning approach in educational data mining, if you want to see more information. Next. Meta learning. This is a very good idea also to apply meta learning for algorithm selection and also for parametric turn, tuning. Meta learning appoints a data mining task, meta, meta learning, that employ meta knowledge to obtain efficient model by adapting machine learning and data mining processing. In EDM, mm, meta, uh, machine learning or meta learning have been used for two things. One, for selecting the best algorithm because the, the structure 100 uh, algorithm 25 algorithm wow it is better that a meta learning approach recommend or select the best classification algorithm the top 10 the top five in order that to predict a student performance with your data okay for your data these five are very good use that you want and i say okay and also the parameter tuning parameter tuning is a lot of problem because uh, you have to fit the the, the, the specific uh, parameter value meta learning approach can be automatic tuning or classification algorithm in order to obtain better results with your data i provide some two paper about algorithm selection and parameter tuning in education okay i provide two two paper if you want to, to read more. Another question, to use other evaluation metrics and also more of good statistical tests for comparison. The first one, evaluation metric in binary classification tasks. If you, are, if you use binary classification tasks, that is not our case because I explained that I, I used to the Spanish scale with four level, not two, two level. Currently, I work all the time with past five, two classes. The same data set with two classes, the accuracy improved a lot. Yes, the same data set with only two class, wow, improved. So traditionally, we work with binary classification. In binary classification, the most used uh, metric are this. Accuracy, of course, the overall efficient of a classifier, Precision, the record sensitivity, the F score, the specificity, the area under the uh, rock curve, and the loss of the area under the rock curve. That is the difference between two values of the EUC, the same model with applied to do data set. I, I have to use this value 
in one of my last uh, paper in order to uh, try, try to test the portability of model. What happened when the model obtaining in this curve apply to a different different course completely different mind of the other structure or uh, i use this uh, evaluation metric and uh, they are the information and uh, very very important the statistical test okay when we try to compare class uh, different algorithm or different classifier you have to do a statistical comparison it is not only to execute, but I do. I execute and put the result. And I say, what of time the best? This tenfold, all tenfold, and this is the best. No. If you want to, to really, really compare the algorithm with one or several data sets, you have to apply a, a statistical comparison. So it is necessary to, to use a statistical rigor to educational data mining experiment because we, we we want to compare algorithms. While methods for comparing two algorithms, any algorithm on a single data set that is a normal, uh, it's in the issue of statistical test for comparison, uh, uh, where we need uh, for multiple data sets, okay? There are some no parametric, parametric tests for a statistical comparison of classifier. What are these non-parametric tests? The first one is Wilkinson Sinet runs. Wilkinson or Wilkinson test let us for doing comparison of two classifiers versus different data set. And you obtain what of the two classifier is really the best with how many difference with the, with the other. Another test is the Freeman test. The Freeman test, the Freeman test, uh, with the corresponding post hoc test. Someone's not muted. I cannot hear well. The... I continue? Yes. Uh, yeah. it, okay. I, I'm actually not a uh, host, so I cannot unmute uh, Wesson, but maybe you can. Okay, okay. The Freeman test is another test that lets to comparison more classifier, several classifier over multiple data sets. That is our case. Freeman test is very good for the comparison that I did in 2008. And also very good is ne Nemenji test. Nemenji test is similar to the Turkey test for ANOVA and uses when all classifiers are compared to each other between them using the critical difference diagram. It's very visual and you can see that there are some algorithms that are very similar and you can recommend to the instructor. There are three, four algorithms. They are not different between them. You can use what do you want. So I recommend Nemenji test for doing the comparison that I did in the, in the paper. Uh, I put the, this paper that is a statistical comparison of classifier. Okay, it's a very good paper that is speaks about this. Okay, now uh, this is uh, the Parker Learning Analytic Price criteria. This criteria was proposed with Ryan Bucker in the Learning Analytic Conference in, I remember that, 2019. Uh, they propose five price, five price. Uh, and it's related about the future in, in which the paper improved because the, this price is not about classification. It's in general about uh, learning analytics and, and, and educational data mining, but it's very related with the classification problem. And also they say about how to say the, the backer price. Uh, the sixth point of the, the backer price is the first one, Transferability is when we you want to transfer model. It's very good because I working now in transferability of the prediction model to transfer one model that you had used in one course. You want to transfer to another course. It's similar than the Ryan proposed the transferability problem. No, 
that Ryan speak about the, the learning system, wall transfer system model from the learning system A to the learning system B. The second is the effectiveness. The effectiveness is the difference in the intervention, changing um, criterion about the intervention. The intervention is very important. In prediction, in classification, uh, uh, in my previous paper, I don't apply any intervention, but of course, if you want to predict, you want to help to the student. So you want to predict as soon as possible, early prediction. The next uh, key point is early prediction in order to provide help, to, to make intervention to the student in order that the, the student predicted to file, finally don't file. So to predict before at the middle of the curve and not at the end. The next, the three is the interpretability of course, interpretability of the model. Instructor, for example, uh, Ryan speak about instructor speak Spanish, algorithm speaks Swahili. They are complete model of a learning analytic phenomenon. The interpretability or in classification is very important. The four, applicability, the applicability, no applicability, no tracing beyond the screen. The model have to be applicable. And the, the last two is very, very important. Generability of the model. Can be your model not very good accuracy, but it's generalizable, it's, can be generalizable uh, to other data set, to, to, to other code set, it's very good. And Ryan proposed two points. In the first, there is a general push border on detector in which it proposed a, a, a threshold. The threshold is when that model uh, obtain uh, out, uh, the, the area under the growth, the outgrowth, uh, higher than 0 0.665, the, the, the model can be obtained with a different model is generalizable. It's the, the threshold when the, your model it have a good referability or it's generalizable. And the, the second one is the, the problem of the New York City and Marfa problem that also appear about the, the problem of uh, the generability, no? I provided uh, two papers. The first one is the, the original Ryan Baker paper with the challenger. And the second one is the, the, the paper in which I use the, the Baker prices. I use, I, 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 I use to test the portability, the transferability of the prediction model in Moodle. Okay, I use it for, for doing this. In this line, uh, one uh, future or key point, a hot topic is early warning prediction. Why early warning prediction? Classification and as, as soon as possible. The early identification or low performance has to be done as is crucial in education for providing health. So we need to do it as soon as possible, not to wait until the end of the course in order to do intervention in order to, to crucial for the success and to provide intervention, remediation, action to the student. Uh, I have done uh, a, a survey about this, uh, uh, a survey paper, uh, dealing about the research question about developing early warning system in order to, to detect what type of decorational system have early prediction currently have been implemented or how often what tenants have been more used in each of these systems? Which the specific algorithm are the most used for obtaining the best prediction result in early prediction? How early, how early? In the middle, in the first month, in the first week, at the second week, how early we can predict a student performance with a acceptable accuracy, not very, very uh, high accuracy, but acceptable predict accuracy and also very important what specific attribute or variable have been used for early prediction in each type of educational system they provide better result not the same attribute used in the fair width a good prediction in the middle of the course or at the end so what variable are the, are the better i provide the the reference and finally more data, data, data. <laughs> I want data, no? 
I remember that they feel uh, uh, they feel that say data 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 right? in data mining educational data mining uh, if you have good data if you have good uh, uh, a lot of data but good data you obtain good results so better better re result better accuracy will be obtained if you use more data for example multi soul not only from Moodle and also multimodal in order to the line to uh, new educational environment that uh, blender learning, flipper classroom, and also the uh, smart learning. First, multimodal learning analytic. Multimodal learning analytic use data from different sources about learning trust from doing single analysis. Another line very, very important is multimodal data fusion that try to combine or integrate data from different several sources, contexts, in order to obtain better understanding of the teacher learning process. The idea is to use multi-source, not only Moodle, but also the, uh, for example, practice in person, practice in person, the final exam, the final exam. But you, if you have also video, the video, uh, video recording, a speech, a speak, text, or text, multi-source. If you have more data, better multi-source. In this line, a smart learning environment. Smart learning environment use tools and technology with collect data about learnings and educator action in learning ecologies from different sources, such as learning management system, handled devices, computers, cameras, microphones, wearables, and environmental sensors. So they probably, they probably the real, real big data. So if we have real big data, the first thing that we have to do is to fuse fusion data, fuse data, and we will improve sure the prediction of the student performance. Okay, and I provide two paper about uh, these two topic, the multimodal and smart learning. And now the last, the conclusion, the conclusion of, of the, the general conclusion, the one, Predicting a student performance is one of the most important tasks, and maybe, maybe the oldest task used in educational data mining and learning analytics area. In fact, I, I have detected papers older than I believe. They are the, the, the two uh, papers, they are one of the 1993 and 1994, but I, I, I try to remember that I find years ago one paper from 1991. Uh, so uh, the, in the first paper about the real application of data mining in educational, they use a statistical method or neural network. You can see the first application was the application of neural network for predicting a student performance years, years ago. In, in, in the in 19s, uh, there, there was a 19 uh, decade, uh, there is a uh, mm, more new uh, about applying neural network to all. Years ago, the neural network uh, one decade uh, stopped, but now neural network start again with the learning, but the origin of the application was neural network, okay? Uh, second, today, nowadays, this task continue, uh, is one of the most promising research area. When you see the current number of paper published by year about this topic, this there is a lot of paper. And finally, there is also a wide and increasing range of improvement and challenges to continue working in this specific research line, as we have seen in this talk with the, all the challenges and new topics that I propose. So I, I believe that there is a, a, a wide range of challenges that you can uh, work with the, this talk. And um, this is the end. Thank you for your interest. And I don't know how much time Great, Cristobal. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. We, we see virtual clapping coming in. Uh, uh.
Wonderful. That was a great, great overview of a lot of work and, and, and history in uh, EDM. Uh, you've been around since the very beginning. I hope some of the younger folks attending ha have, have received a, a, a sense of, of that history from you. Um, there are some questions in Speak Up, um, but I also welcome you to speak up here. Uh, you can raise your hand or even uh, just jump in. Um, uh, I see that uh, uh, there's a question that's gotten a couple of votes uh, here in Speak Up. Um, have you seen which of the features were most important for the algorithm's uh, prediction? Uh, thanks, great talk. Uh, yes, I can make this question. Yes. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I was curious because I saw that uh, there are, uh, there were, there were interesting features like the total time of assignment and so on. And I was curious to see, if, yeah, if we have seen any kind of, yeah, of patterns there. You want to see this? This? Yeah. So have you have you computed the the the, the importances of the features? How I compute these values? No, no. Have you have you tried to see how it, if if there is if there are some features that are more important than ah, others? No, no, no. This is a a a, a good line to reset that to test what of these values attribute are important in different times of the course because some of them i am sure that are better in the first part of the course and other are more higher prediction value and the uh, at the end of the course so it's true it's true but uh, in the original in fact i, I apply all all these attributes I, I, we believe that are the best, but years ago, I improved the, the attribute. In my last paper, I don't use this attribute. In fact, yes, it's true. For example, to use the codes, it's not, not, not logical because there are seven codes set. It's, it's similar than to put the, the student value. If you have 14 students and you have to the one to this attribute don't provide any information. The number of the codes. But it is true that you say, uh, but in our original problem, we try to, to test all the data at the end of the course, all the data and to apply. Later, we can see also that in some courses, the prediction is true that in some courses, the prediction was better than in other. Yes, of course, in some courses, the prediction, was, the accuracy was rather. But also, as you say, it's very good that there are some attributes that are better predict prediction are better than other but but are better at different moment of the course so you need to obtain this attribute in in for example in the first week you have a course in 10 weeks for you have 10 weeks and you obtain the data in partition first we do the prediction and try to see what is the best attribute. Doing a attribute selection. I apply in some paper this. Try to select the best attribute before to apply the algorithm. Yes, it improves the classification. Yes. Yeah. Really Another thanks. question uh, we have uh, says, uh, since your early and influential work in 2008, many things have progressed in educational data mining. What would you say is one of the important changes in EDM since then? And somebody added as a clever comment, can you predict what's next? <laughs> wow. The next. Uh, uh, but, but you can take those one at a time. Like looking back, you, you, you listed a number automatic. of you know, great yes, uh, new, yes. new things yes. here. Yeah. From the you point of view. Like one of these that yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe is the most important change. The most important. Yeah. Automatic early prediction with intervention. This is the future. This is the future. This is the future. Because 
automatic and also with intervention. This is the future. The future is Moodle predict who a student will don't pass and Moodle probate help. <laughs> it, Moodle predict and automatically send a message to the student saying, hey, student, you are not good. Try to participate more, try to study better. So automatically, only one in prediction, but also with intervention, because we have to uh, close the cycle. It's, when you do prediction, the structure of, of the institution have to apply the result. We need the, the, the information. We need the, 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 white, the white model in order to know what happened and what the student happened and how we can help. So the future is this, of course. And, and in, this, in this topic, we mix all. We mix uh, mm, with the institution, we mix with the uh, enterprise, with the, <laughs> with the money, <laughs> because uh, the institution, they, they say, oh, educational data mining, this is algorithm. Oh, no, 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 this is, I don't understand what do you, you predict a student with deep learning, but they, no, 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 no. I, I have an algorithm integrated that predict and also a probably intervention and also uh, help to the student, for example, a virtual agent and some familiar with the student that help the student when they have problem because they are automatically detected as file a student. So we need the predictor, but we need the help. So in the future, the, the, the e-learning, uh, adaptive interface, intelligent interface will integrate the, the, the prediction, but also need a, a, a communication with the student. The communication can be a, a assistant, of course, uh, because in order to be uh, more user friendly with the user, because the final is the student. We have to communicate with the student. Is you, you know, the instructor, uh, in the class, uh, the, the, the father, oh, the father directly can be better. The automatically, the, the intervention can be do using virtual. That's great. Virtual agents. Yeah. Um, this another is a question. A, a future line. <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, another question uh, says, thanks for the talk. I think it would be amazing to see the effect of the structure of each course on the result. The, the someone, does the person who asked that want to elaborate? They say uh, some courses could potentially have more assignments or different assessment methods than others. To yeah. see the effect of the structure of each course on the result is what the questioner is asking about. Um, Someone want to unmute that asked that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was me. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for the talk. It, it was it was amazing. And yeah, I, I was wondering if at some point, uh, like a classification of the structure of the course could have an impact in the in the results that you have presented. Because for example, uh, if if we think in computer science courses, maybe they will have more um, uh, assignments and more submissions and more projects that if we compare, for example, with the sports science. But what is the, the question? I, what is the specific the question? It, I, I yeah, don't understand the question. I, what yeah, is yeah, yeah. It, it was more, uh, it yeah, was yeah, more yeah. a comment. Than wow, than wow. Yeah, it's a comment. It's yeah. not. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe part of the question is do can we build models that are sensitive yeah, to but, uh, different course structures acabo, and maybe give different corto, Ana. Directo, venga. No, I, I, it's, a, <laughs> it's a family because I have from three keys from 2008. In 2008, I, I married with my wife. Yes, I was. And currently I have three keys. It's, <laughs> Crazy, the yes. time is crazy. That's a <laughs> test of time. At uh, what time do you uh, finish the presentation? <laughs> no, no, okay, continue, continue. About the question. Yeah. Well, I, I guess my part of the question is, uh, can we build models that are sensitive to different structures of courses and will we get different results? Yeah. Depending on, you know, what kind of 
course it is, maybe how much active learning is going on, for example, or you know, whether it's, I guess we saw some interesting papers looking at whether it's a flipped or blended class versus a MOOC is another kind of contrast that I Okay, there is a background. Uh, yeah, okay. I have a, a, a paper that can be useful about this is no, it's multimodal, no. Aquí. This, 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 this. In this paper, in this paper, uh, in which I apply the, the Ryan price, I use, uh, I remember, uh, wow, how, how many Moodle courses? Wow, a lot, a lot. And I try also to group, to group courses because in Moodle, not only because they are also uh, e-learning courses, okay, but it's not the same. Uh, computer design courses, that social courses, me design courses, but also the, so the, the the content of the courses can be different. The structure are can be also different. They are not the same computer science courses from the other area. But the most important is is that um, the that the course use the same or not the same results in Moodle. That is, for example, there are courses or tutors that use all, they are expert in Moodle and they use all the resources in Moodle. For example, I, I use forum, quizzes, uh, um, chat, uh, all the resources, wiki, real time, but there are other professors that use Moodle for, for in part their class, but they, only use the basic, some basic resources, assessment and put uh, the, the content in PDF and one forum. So when you try to compare and also when you think about it and you want to transfer and to compare and to generalize your tiny model, you only can do it with similar causes. With similar causes are causes similar, not only in the content about computer science or mathematics or medicine, no, about courses that use the same level or the same number of resources in Moodle. That is basic Moodle courses, media or expert courses. So in the, the, this is one of the, the, when I use now, for example, I, we cannot mix now seven courses very different. It's, it's a crazy to mix these seven courses because they are very different. It's true to very different subject and also very different uh, uh, value of the attributes because in some courses, some attributes are zero, 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 zero because they don't have forum or they don't have chat or they don't have final quiz. So if you come to, to fusion and to mix, a model that you want to generalize later, you need similar courses at least with the similar attributes. Or, or you have to detect what are the minimal similar attributes in all the courses in order to obtain a model that can be applied to all the courses. For example, assignment, quizzes, and time. Okay, you use three attributes that all the courses of the world have. So this model, is not very accuracy, but is generalizable to all the courses of the world. Right. Yeah, it's a great trade-off. Well, thank you so much, Cristobal, for your wonderful talk uh, and, uh, and great uh, answers to questions. And uh, once again, uh, congratulations on the Well-Deserved Tested Time Award. We thank you for your wonderful contributions up till now, and we look forward to more, especially seeing such a great paper. I hope to see you next year. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I hope to see you all of you. Next year, yes. Indeed. In person, in person. Super. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and we now have a coffee break uh, in uh, uh, back, back in uh, Gather Town. Yes, Sherry. Thank you. Sherry's nodding. Yes. We'll see you in Gather Town. <laughs>
uh, have some hallway conversation. Bye. Yeah. Bye.